Professor Z here, and I would say I consider myself a power user when it comes to Apple Macintosh. I've been using Macintoshes since the 90s. Um, I have been an Apple certified technician in the past. I probably still have a certification somewhere because it was a evergreen one. I just haven't re-upped it in a long time, but I've been using it so long and I change a lot of settings to make my workflow more efficient no matter what I'm doing. So these are kind of my top settings that I always modify on all my Macs when I get them fresh out of the box or go to a classroom to teach. These are the things I change to make my workflow more efficient. I want to share those with you. So first up, something I use all the time when I'm teaching, uh, especially when I'm teaching software so I can show things uh, up close so people can see them, is the Zoom feature. So to Zoom, I want to go to system preferences and I'm going to get there this time by going to the Apple menu up here, go to system settings. Sorry, I'm still calling it preferences from the old days. It's system settings. So I am running Mac OS Sonoma right now. It's in beta version. This is also how the system settings looks in Ventura. If you're using any previous OS, it has the grid format. Still the same features are there. So if I come here on the left and go to my accessibility, I'm going to choose this zoom feature right here. And right here, there's a use scroll gesture with modifier keys to zoom. Go ahead and click on that. And now you can change which key it uses. You can use the control, the option, or the command. I use control because uh, it's right there on the corner of the keyboard. It makes it easy to use. So when I hold control down and use my mouse to scroll, I can scroll in and zoom in. I can scroll out to scroll up and zoom out. And that way, I can go, hey, take a look at this over here and zoom in on that part of the screen. I need to go look at this menu up here. I can click on it and zoom in, and now I can show the menu much better on a projector screen or a TV screen in a classroom. So that, especially for instructors and professors, that is, to me, one of the most invaluable tools that the Mac has to offer. So let's close that. Let's go to the next thing. And I don't know why this isn't a default at this point. So when the first Mac came out, it had, first of all, it was the first computer to have a mouse, period. Uh, Strike that. Xerox actually had a mouse before that. Yes, Xerox made a computer. Mac stole the idea. They put a mouse on their computers when the Macintosh comes out, but it only has a single button on it. In order to get to your pop-up menus, you have to hold down the control key and then click, and then you get your menu to pop up for your extra features and settings. Now, I like to use the right click. So again, let's go to system settings. And this time we're gonna get there a little differently. I'm gonna use spotlight search. And this is my favorite way to use Spotlight Search on a Mac, is hold Command Spacebar on your keyboard and your Spotlight Search window pops up and you can just type in what you're looking for. You can see it knows I'm looking for system settings. It also gives me a list of other suggestions based on what I typed in, but system settings is what I'm looking for. I'm just gonna hit the return key on my keyboard to open that up. And here we are, system settings, and I'm now going to scroll down to where my mouse settings are and make sure this secondary click is turned on. Now I have it on a right side click. If you're a lefty, you can turn on a left side click and use it that way so you can be more comfortable. And you can see this, I'm using my wireless, I do have to charge my mouse after this. For me, organization is key. Being able to find things easily on my computer really helps. That's why I love the spotlight search, but I also love having a clean desktop. Right now, this is messy. It is kind of organized, I organized it by name at this point, but you know, sometimes I, I see people's desktops and they got stuff over here and they got stuff over here. You know, things are on top of each other because you can do that on a Mac. It might look like this and that gets kind of messy and out of control and you got a little screen. To me, it's just like, why are you doing that to yourself? A couple years ago, Mac released a feature or Apple, I should say, released a feature called Stacks, which I love. So if you right click on your desktop or control click, you can go down and hit use stacks. You click on this and it's going to organize all of your stuff based on file type into different stacks, like on your desktop. And so my images are all in one stack, my PDFs are all in the stack, my music's all in a stack. And if I click any one of those, it'll extend out that stack so I can see what's in there and I close it back up again. It to me is a wonderful, wonderful setting to have to clean up that desktop. Now, another thing that I like to go do, because you know Apple has this very clean mentality, they want nothing on your desktop if they can help it. I go in my finder settings right here, and I change a couple things. So under the general tab, I make sure all these are turned on, because I like to see the hard drive on my desktop 
it just makes sense to me. Um, I like to see the servers that I connect to on my desktop because it makes sense to me. I don't want to have to go digging through things to find things. As a power user, I need these turned on. Now for any user, I find that this right here is awesome. Knowing what folder is gonna open every time you open up your Finder is really cool because you can click this and choose any folder you want to be the default folder that opens when you open up your Finder. So that way, if you're always working in OneDrive or your Dropbox, that's the folder that opens. Instead of like whatever it thinks you wanna do, you tell it what to do. I also go in my sidebar and I like to modify this. You know, what do I wanna see on my sidebar? What do I not need to see on my sidebar? Like I don't really uh, download music, so why would I have that on my sidebar? I can clean up my organization that way. And also in my advanced settings, I like to come down here and I change this right here where to perform my search. So if you have your Finder window open and you do a search by default, Spotlight's searching your entire computer, everything attached to it. You can change this so it's just searching the folder that you are in, which to me makes sense because if I'm in the folder, I know what I'm looking for is probably in that folder and I just wanna search through that. I don't wanna search the whole computer. Instead of taking an extra step to like retell it what I'm searching for, I tell it that by default. And lastly, close that right there, is something I change in my browsers. Every browser, whether it's Firefox, Chrome, Safari, whatever you're using, go ahead and open up your, your browser, go to your settings, and Safari anyways, under the general tab, you can change where your downloads go. By default, they all go to your downloads folder, which is nice and convenient for certain things. But again, as a power user, as an editor, you know, if I'm editing video uh, or doing projects, I want to move those to certain places. So by telling you to ask for where to send every download, when I'm doing that, you know, I download a file or an asset for a project I'm working on, I can put it right to the external hard drive or right to the proper folder or my OneDrive folder right away instead of downloading it and then moving it. Uh, especially helpful for, I have students all the time, you know, they're working in Premiere, they download something to the downloads folder and they just drag that into Premiere to use it as part of their project. And then they save it on their hard drive, they go somewhere else, they open up their project and that asset is missing because it's still living on that downloads folder on the computer they downloaded it on and they never actually moved it into their hard drive. So by turning this feature on in whatever browser you're using, will help you so much to make sure you have the files you need and stay organized. So these are the top features that I use on all my Macs. Uh, whenever I go into classroom, I turn a lot of these things on to make sure they work for me in the work process I am using. I want to be efficient. I want to be able to work quickly and efficiently when I'm doing my project so that I can spend more time doing other things instead of staring at the screen all the time. So I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, if you liked any of these features, let me know in the comments below and I'll be making more of these videos in the future.